Assalamu alaikum, everyone. We'll be starting very soon on Instagram, on Facebook, as well as on Zoom. The people who will be on the Zoom will see all the presentation, the slideshow, inshallah. But we will start very soon, in one minute, or less than one minute, inshallah, about the second episode, the second part of question and answer time. And you are most welcome to send your comment, your questions. So, uh, and if you are on the Zoom, we can let you speak, inshallah. Few seconds to go. And here we are. Uh, dear everyone, uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum, whenever you are, wherever you are. We wish you uh, good life, good time, and prosperous life, inshallah. Today we are talking about the second episode in 2023 of Fatfada 5 to 5. Talk about questions from my colleague Hassan, Dr. Hassan Janid, who is not with us today, unfortunately. I'll have to do the question and answer myself. And uh, two weeks ago, we started with the first four questions. And today, we'll start with the second three questions, inshallah. And uh, this is Dr. Hassan. This, and this is some of the questions. He sent me 11 questions, which I will uh, share them with you now. The first one, how can everyone engage in any suitable civil society work? Not necessarily engaging with any civil society organization. How can we build the concept of trust with our society and to become policy makers, influencers? How can we always be impartial towards our society, not towards the tyranny of the dictatorship regime? Number four, how can the civil society work produce civil policies to manage and direct national election, national economy, national education? These were the fourth, the first four questions which we were actually discussed last week, uh, two weeks ago. Today, we'll be discussing another three questions. The number five is how can our growth inside an environmental tyranny will make us social change holders or makers? Uh, number six will be how do we ensure that we don't belong to one geographical region uh, versus another geographical region? Uh, Question number three, or here will be number seven, will be number seven is going to be how can we be careful not to be, not to establish a humanitarian organization and then deny the principles of humanitarian action work. So these are the three questions that I'm going to answer today and maybe next week or the week after I will answer the rest of the questions. So when we look at uh, question number five, how can our growth, how can our growth inside an environmental tyranny will make us the social change makers, social change makers. The definition of environment or climate, environment is a climate or atmosphere where all social components resides synchronously inside it. This will happen according to their harmonious coexistence together for the purpose of creating different distinctive cultures and ideological philosophy, distinguishing them from one another. If an environment is a climate or atmosphere where all the social components in the society resides together synchronously. 
this will happen according to the system, system created by Allah, according to the harmonious coexistence together for the purpose of creation of different what distinctive cultures and ideological philosophies, distinguishing them from one another. This is connected and linked to the master piece of creation of system creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All this will happen with one guarantor. This will happen when we have one guarantee, one guarantor. What is this one guarantor? It's freedom or civil liberty. It's freedom. Effective freedom is the only guarantor for the growth of what? Of diverse, multidimensional, cultural, philosophical, ideological movement inside all different social community components harmoniously. I'll say this again. Effective freedom and civil liberty space Effective freedom is the only is the only guarantor for the growth of diverse, multidimensional, cultural, philosophical, ideological movement inside what? Inside the different social community components harmoniously. All this will be governed by the system that are being created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if the environment or the atmosphere was authoritarian, or dictatorship, what will happen? The byproduct will be one of two. As if there's some, a community is like a woman, is pregnant to produce a baby. The first baby will be born immature, incompetent, incomplete, will produce immature, incompetent, incomplete cultural, ideological philosophies that will fail to build strong and sound societies. Because of what? Because of the, uh, there's no freedom, uh, no uh, civil liberty space, and inside a dictatorship uh, regime. That's the first baby will become out, or the first product. The second product, by the same womb, which is the community, will be producing culturally mutilated. You know what mutilated means? Disfigured. Mutilated. Deformed, philosophically, ideological culture. Making it, making what? Making the community component, every community component, helpless, incapable, and unable to live as capable social component, able to build societies. And the second byproduct will produce culturally mutilated, deformed, Philosophically, ideological culture will never be able to build any any community component. So the first one will be weak, the second one will be mutilated, deformed. Okay? This is because of what? Because the lack of freedom, lack of civil, civil liberty space, and the authoritarian dictatorship regime. So mainly military and security. we we'll move to the second slide. Both of these byproducts will be like a newborn weak baby, which is the first one, and disabled baby, which is the second one, who are unable to cope with the different social changes. They will never be able to cope with the different social changes. Because of what? Because of lack of freedom, uh, 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 no civil liberty space, dictatorship regime, tyranny in this society. Both of them, prior product, will be like a newborn weak baby in the first case, disabled, disfigured baby for the second case, who are unable to cope with the different social changes. Such a newborn, weak one, which is the first one, will be affected huh, negatively more than positively by the different social circumstances. This weak baby, from the, the first example by product, will be affected negatively 
by the social circumstances, different social circumstances, as well as as well as will not be able to maintain or protect the community culture. This component coming from such a womb, which actually governed by this bad atmosphere because of dictatorship and because of lack of civil liberty space and because of lack of freedom, will produce this weak baby, which will be unable uh, to produce and to to and uh, to, to to maintain uh, to protect the community culture, history, philosophy of thinking, ideology, or even having a vision for the future generation. Because of what? Because of tyranny, as well as because of the lack of civil liberty space, because of lack of freedom by this authoritarian dictatorship regime. The second baby, which is the mutilated one, the deformed one will be deformed, retarded, and disabled component and cannot think, think, think properly. Cannot construct life properly around, uh, construct life around it and cannot maintain even the race. Disabled, deformed, and uh, cannot function. This second one, which is the deformed, mutilated, newborn, will not be even able to carry any responsibility, any responsibility, and will always be unable to do anything while he is a burden on his guardian. As Allah SWT said in the Holy Quran, wherever he directs himself, he brings no good. And when we look at the two byproduct of tyranny, climate of tyranny, atmosphere of tyranny and dictatorship, lack of freedom and lack of civil liberty space, they will produce these two community byproduct, community component. One of them will be very weak. The second one will be disabled, mutilated, disfigured. The deformity here in the second baby or the second social component or community component, not in the image, yani not in the color, not in the nose, not in the mouth, not in the ears. No, it's in the creation itself. It's not complete, deformed, mutilated because of the tyranny of the atmosphere. It's not in the, it, it is in the creation. In the natural nature, the tabi'a, the fitra, natural nature of the creation of the baby itself, which is a community component, which happened because of what? What makes this happen? Because of repression from the regime. The regime will make, will, will make repression, will create repression, fear, will charge anybody for treason, will create starvation around people, will create impoverishment, imprisonment, detention, torture, make people isolated from society because each one of them will work sing in singular places, individually, deprivation, lack of social services, forced displacement and migration, confiscation of properties and wealth and the other measures imposed by this repressive regime governing the country. If the mutilation and the deformity of the baby or the community component will be because of repression, fear, charging of treason, starvation, impoverishment, imprisonment, detention, torture, being isolated from the isolated from the community, deprivation, lack of social services, forced displacement and migration, confiscation of properties and wealth and the other measures imposed by them, by by the repressive regimes upon them. All these measures and the others will ultimately lead to the birth of the deformed, mutilated, newborn, which is the community component, which is the community component. Is there any hope of producing third baby, which would be uh, good, sound, lively. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. 
But this is an exceptional case in such atmosphere. If you have a repressive, repressing uh, tyranny, dictatorship, leadership, exceptionally one in a thousand or one in ten and hundred thousand, one in sorry, one one in ten thousand, or one in hundred thousand, and one in a million, they produce such a good, sound, healthy, strong baby. But community is not built on exceptional cases, unfortunately. But if we remove the repressive regime, and if we establish effective freedom, and if we increase the civil liberty space, we'll be able to have these sound babies living inside our community to, make, to become the community component which will create the country and the nation in the future. This is the question number six, actually, which was, how can our growth inside an environmental tyranny will make us social change holders? It is one in 10,000, in 100,000, or in a million, because of the repression of the repressive regime. OK. The second question, which question number six, how can we be loyal to one geographical area? Yeah, and you see, I am from London, so I'm a Londoner. I am from Birmingham, I'm Romy. I am from Newcastle. I am from Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. I am from Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. I am from Doha in Qatar. I am from, Pak from, from Karachi in, in Pakistan. I am from uh, Islamabad. I am from Delhi. I am from Bombay. I am from uh, Frankfurt. I am from New York. I am from whatever you call it. This kind of geograph geographical departmentalization, geographical departmentalization, if you don't want to become affiliated to one geographical area, you have to be affiliated to a bigger area in your vision and in your life. What are the bigger areas that would not make you affiliated of, to one geographical area? Number one, to be affiliated to a sprawling world, the whole world, I am a global citizen. that has not been created by political parties, military armies, or by those topographic drawings. This is your feeling if you don't want to become affiliated to one geographical area. You become affiliated to the Ummah, the Ummah of Christianity, the Ummah of Judaism, the Ummah of Islam, the Ummah of Hinduism, the Ummah of Buddhism, the global Ummah not only in one geographical location of this Ummah. To be affiliated to the year after. And the heavenly kingdom. So you are looking forward to the heaven, to the year after to come. To ideology. To vision. Affiliate to our ideology, to vision, to mission, uh, to accommodate the far and the near and the, straight, the, the, the foreigner the, to you and the closer one to you. To be affiliated to reforming freedom, to, to a reforming freedom fighter organization, the one who is trying to liberate the world from the, it is tyranny. A spreading different methodologies of social changes and reconstruction. This kind of theoretical, or of academic discussion should be on the table if you don't want to be long to one geographical area. To be affiliated to the fatherhood of Adam. We love Adam, but we hate the Satan. The guidance of the prophets and messengers of Allah and the prayers and the support of the angels. If you don't want to be affiliated to one geographical area, be affiliated to the gigantic, sprawling, unseen, unknown world, Alam al Ghaib wa Shahada, which extends from the Lot tree, which is Sidrat al Muntaha in heaven, to the depth of the haunted sea, which is Al Bahr al Masjur, at the depth of the oceans. This is also theoretical. 
to be affiliated to the greater humanity. Life of humanity, knowing its direction, restoring its path, and understanding the causes of its existence. To be affiliated to the rooting rules established on the rational or the rationale of legislation and the empowering revelation holders. To be affiliated to the entity of the creation, the processing processes of time and the performance, the permanence of accepting forgiveness from the wider doors of mercy. All this kind of trying to take you out from being affiliated to a smaller geographical location, you become affiliated to the greater universe, to the greater teaching of the, of, of the, of the great scholars and prophets and messengers of humanity. If you don't want to become affiliated to one geographical area. To become a real global citizen, which you feel that no boundary should stop you from traveling from A to B to C to D because all belong to Ayah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this feeling, if you don't want to become affiliated to one geographical area, this goes back to the capacity of the intellectual faculties of human beings which has been put at the back of the mind and the soul of our father Adam by Allah. When Allah told the angels, I am going to create a custodian for myself on earth. Said, Are you going to put in on earth who can split their blood, shed blood, and we, Allah, are making tasbih and dhikr and salah for you. He told them, I know what you don't know. Then he taught Adam all the names of the signs of, for life to construct life. Adam al -asma kullah. He taught Adam السلام, all the names of the signs that will enable Adam to construct life on earth, which have been not been known to the angels before. And when he asked them about this name, said, Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'atana. Oh my God, we don't know anything apart from what you taught us. And when he asked Adam to respond to the question, he answered them. That's why they became sujood. They made sujood to Adam alayhi salam. This is, in, in, at the back of the mind of Adam السلام, Allah has increased the capacity of the intellectual faculties inside the brain and the mind and the soul of Adam and enable him to construct life on earth. Which let Adam to absorb this abundant knowledge, plentiful belief, Assuring insight, the insight of Adam, السلام, authentic purity, and better struggle to build the life movement for everyone, to increase the capacity of the intellectual faculties at the back of the mind of the brain of Adam, enable him to absorb knowledge, to increase the depth of his belief, to have assuring insight to have authentic purity and better struggle to build the life movement for everyone and forever. Human being will discover in himself or herself the ability and the capacity to absorb the capacity of this universe because we have them at the back of our mind. How much we use of our brain Capacity, 5%, 10%, but we are not using it 100%. To absorb the capacity of this universe 
and what it has of different components, features, hidden treasures, and disadvantages. When you collectively look at all the great human beings who discovered things on Earth, in skies, make theories and laws and hypotheses, and collect all of them together, you found that this is a part of the capacity of the brain which managed to understand what is around them in the universe. The intellectual capacity of human facilities tied to the origin of life will be more than the capacity of the corners of its life. Yani, I can explain this. This intellectual capacity at the back of our mind can comprehend and absorb and all the creation of God on earth and heaven. If we manage to use them, if we manage to use them, I'll say this again, the intellectual capacity of human facilities tied to the origin of life will be more than the capacity of the corners of life itself. In our brain, in our mind, in our soul, capacities that we are not using them. Allah put them in the back of the mind of Adam. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ عَظَمَ عَلْمَلَيْكَةً Because Adam and his children are empowered to come down to earth to discover everything, to use everything, to empower every creation of God, to be responsible for humanity. But unfortunately, up till now, the human being is not using more than 5 to 10 percent of the capacity of the intellectual faculties in his brain or her brain, on his soul and her soul, on his mind or her mind. This is the easy and difficult boss. Okay. But it will exert its efforts to accommodate all the components that sustain life and connect it to the originator of life, fountains, wellspring, and thoughts of his development. Yani, when you sit down with some of the prophets or listen to their says you see how they can comprehend what they have never seen and what they have never experienced and what they have never been taught to I said what why would you get this north because the capacity to understand this is there at the back of the mind you need you and me and everyone to dig deep down at the back of the mind of each and every one of them to discover the wealth and the depth and the width of the capacity of our intellectual faculties, which will enable us to discover the universe which has been created for us so we can manage it and we can construct life and we can protect life for human beings. This is the easy and difficult question at the same time. Easy for those who are determined to discover it. If you want, people are listening to me, if you people want to discover the whole universe, dig deep down at the back of your mind and the depth of your soul and at your intellectual faculties to discover the passwords of the different life for different creation of God. And Allah will guide you because it's, it's in you, male and female. If you want to do it, Allah will help you and discover it. But difficult to struggle against whom? Against the soul itself. Oh, the soul will tell you, Oh my God, and nafs al amar basu, the soul which commanded you to do the bad, bad thing. Oh, you're tired, go to sleep, don't wake up at night, don't wake up at fajr, don't wake up for prayer, don't go out to help people, don't, 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 don't. 
But if you determine to discover it, you'll be like those people who discovered some of the secrets of the origin of life. But if it's difficult for the people who are lazy, like most of the human beings, it's up to us, all of us, all of us, if we don't want to differentiate between a geographical area and the others. Halas, yani, you can say all of them are the same. Uh, it doesn't make any difference for me. Don't take, and this is my statement to you. Please listen to it carefully. Don't take religion as a ride. Religion will never become a ride. Faith as a privilege. Knowledge as a secrecy. And the awareness as higher status. Yani, yani, I am knowledgeable. Oh, I should be better than you. No, no. Never ever take religion as a ride. Take religion as a life to guide our life, to protect our life, to save our life, and take us in safety to the life to come. But make what? I said, don't take religion as a right, faith as a privilege, knowledge as a secrecy, secrecy, and the awareness as a higher status, but make, listen, this as a duty on every one of us. This is as a duty on every one of us. But make hum humility is the origin, the origin of our character. Education is a social duty. Modesty and restoration is essential manner of us. Empowerment and social construction is basic legitimacy. Communication and networking is practical beginnings. Coordination and partnership is humanitarian principles. Generations guidance and free thinking as a primary parameter. Experience transfer and leadership making is practical horizons. Research and studies are investment processes. Concession for community benefits is a divine tradition. Accountability, transparency, and disclosure are splendor virtues. Discrediting and modification, education and judgment extraction, the education and judgment extraction are induced interactions, forecasting for scientific resurgence, value based civilization making humanity happy. It's up to us young people to make the social change. I'll say this again. In you and me, we have to change inside our character. Humility is original character, is our original character, humility. Education is a social duty for us. Modesty and restoration is essential manner. Empowerment and social reconstruction is basic legitimacy. Communication and networking is practical beginnings. Coordination and partnership is humanitarian principles. Generation guidance and free thinking is primary parameters. Experience transfer and leadership making is practical horizons. Research and studies are investment processes. Concession for the community benefits is a divine tradition. Accountability, transparency, and disclosure are splendor virtues. Discrediting and the modification education and judgment extraction are induced interaction forecasting for scientific resurgence value-based civilization making humanity happy it's up to you i'm just telling the young people stop mourning stop yawning stop screaming and discover what has been put at the back of your mind and your soul and your heart as allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala put all this in the mind and soul of Adam uh, to increase the capacity of his intellectual faculties. 
to accommodate everything, every creation, every knowledge that Allah put. But it's up to you, up to us, to dig deep down and discover them. And young people, stop mourning. Stop mourning while you are wasting hours and hours and hours watching fo fo football, watching uh, 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 posts on social media, uh, communicating, chit-chatting, not doing nothing, complaining about something which you can mend and you can correct. Don't wait for people to save you. Your action, your prayer, your struggle, your perseverance will save you and will make you different to other people. Preserving and protecting the civil society sector and these organizations will not be achieved by just delivering lectures like today, organizing conferences, publishing new laws, and regulation or following new parameters and terms of reference, not really only. And instead, it will be a moral performance from myself and yourself, developmental role modeling, developmental role modeling. If you become a role model, you have to develop people around you. Constructive journey of life, behavioral generosity, Selfless existence by yourself, successful provision, and the abundant inheritance for the effective, motivated, motivating, empowered, empowering young leaders. It's not just a talk or a lecture or a reminder or a conference or a workshop. No, it's a struggle, in a struggle, in a struggle to learn, to comprehend, to digest to extract, to help, to develop, to suffer, to support, and to live for others. Those who live for others, live forever. If you want to get what you want, you give what you have. If you want to get what you want, you, get, you give what you have. Young lead, young leader, young, 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 young people, stop mourning. The last question, which is question number seven or number three of today. How can we be aware of not founding a humanitarian organization and then ignoring and neglecting the civil society sector and these organizations? What I have understood from this question is. Be careful of founding humanitarian organization that later on will ignore the humanitarian principles and civil society policies. But if we want to achieve that, okay, we have to follow these principles. If we don't want to fall in this trap, we have to follow these principles. First of all, Dealing with the founder syndrome. What do you mean by the founder syndrome? I'm a founder. You are a founder. She is a founder. Of course, Allah guided us and gave us the idea to found an organization. Social organization, charity organization, humanitarian organization, economic organization, political organization, whatever it is. And this was a blessing from Allah to you. Allah chose you to give you this. But you are not there forever. You are there to give the community and the relay team the stick. My term in the organization be 10 years, 15 years now. During my term in office, I have to build the capacity of the younger generation. The founder syndrome, dealing with the founder syndrome effectively and creating an alternative suitable role for him or her to play after finishing their term of office. I remember my colleague, uh, my friend, was the chief executive of, of, of the Red Cross. He was working for another uh, social organization, and the founder refused to leave the organization. You know what they have done? They voted her out, but she's still coming to the, to the office. One day, 
they change the lock. They ha this has happened to more than one organization. You don't want to leave? Okay, we'll change the lock, we'll vote you out. So she humiliated her existence. This is the founder syndrome. But we can find another role for him or her to play because they have experience, they have motivation, they have all these kinds of things. Dealing also with the first generation sickness. Oh, they are the people who, who what? They are the people who struggle so much, who give so much, who support so much who spend so much of their time and their money on the community. Yes, fine, we respect them. But their intellectual capability is out of date. I am the best man of the 70s and the 80s. I cannot be the best man of the 90s and the, two, the, 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 the 2000s because of my intellectual capability. But I have some certain, what you call it, institutional memory. Use me because I'm from the first generation. Not on the executive role, but on the advisory role and the consultation role. Building the suitable vision that will enable the organization to achieve its aims and objectives. Yes, this is what we need to do with. If we don't want to fall on this trap, placing suitable governing policies laws and parameters if we don't want to become an organization that forgot about humanitarian and social principles. We have to put the governance principles, policies, laws, and parameters. Being keen to represent the mosaic of the social industry. No, the mosaic of the social diversity. What do I mean by that? We are in the UK. We have the Asian from Bangladesh, from Pakistan, from India, from Sri Lanka. We have uh, the African from North Africa, from East Africa, from South Africa, from Central Africa. We have the East European. We have the Latin American. So we have to be very keen to represent the mosaic of the diversity, of social diversity inside our organization. It's not one color. It's not one language, it's not one faith, it's not one belief, it's not one culture. It's all of this. It's all of this and more. Being keen to represent the mosaic of social diversity inside the organization. Representing different cultures, ideologies, ethnicities, doctrine and faith, political and philosophical thinking. Showing the balance in representing young people and women in the organization, not only as a, as a decorative tools, but they are actually effective, executive in, in their effective and the executive roles as young people as well as women. Young people and women. Being keen to present the journey of successive leadership. What do I mean? Succession planning. Maybe you are the founder. You've done a great job. Success all your life. Spend all your money in the organization. But you have to give the leadership to somebody with you before you leave the organization. Before you leave the organization. So my dream is each one of the senior leadership in their executive role during their period of time in office, they are responsible to train at least five to ten people before they leave. To empower five to ten people before they leave. Leadership executive role is not a salary, is not a title, is not a glamour, is not an image, is not a status. It is building the blocks for the roadmap for the second generation and not only building the roadmap or drawing the roadmap but putting the milestones as a flashing light to guide the generation to come after they leave and empowering young people 
and teaching them how can they themselves keep drawing or carrying on drawing road maps and putting the milestones as uh, landmarks. One of the roles of the organization leadership is to create and empower young leaders, particularly in shadowing those remaining leaders from the first golden generation and era of time. You cannot leave the organization. You cannot die. You cannot afford to see you dying before empowering young people while you are in office. It will become a sin, social sin on you and me if we walk out with a great successful story for ourselves, legacy, but there's no one that we have taught to become a disciple to carry on the mission after we leave, while in, in our office. Investing in building volunteers. Don't use volunteers as someone who just distributing leaflets, organizing tables and fundraising. No, it's a waste of time. It use his brain and her brain. Increase the depth and the capacity of their intellectual faculties. Mentor them. Coach them. Keep increasing their institutional memory about the society and about the organization. Why should you why we should invest in volunteering? First of all, to utilize their energy, the energy of the young people and explore their potentials. It raises energy and they explore potentials. Second, to give them the confidence, to give them the confidence, to give them the confidence of becoming the future organizational and the community leaders. Tell them, young man, young woman, one day during my time or after my time, you become the community leader. You can become the next minister. You can become the second uh, best prime minister. You can become the professor in the university, the dean of the college, the, the president of the university, the chancellor of the university, and, 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 while you are in office. While you are in office. Investing in research studies and documenting history, that's something, unfortunately, 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 we are not investing in it at all. Being fully aware of technological, scientific, cultural, social, ideological, philosophical, ethical, economical, and political development of the communities, local and global. You cannot just be a responsible individual without understanding what's going on in different fields. Organizing, partnering, participating in different relevant conferences and workshops. All these kind of things should be put on the table for every executive and every individual to prevent, to prevent, to prevent the organization becoming or forgetting about, I'll say the question again, how can we be aware of not founding a humanitarian organization and then ignoring or neglecting the civil side sector and this organization. If we put this on the table with us, we'll be able to maintain the principles of the organizations. One of the rules of the organization leadership, I, say, I said this before, is to create and empower young leaders, particularly in shadowing those remaining leaders from the uh, first golden generation. I I've mentioned this before. Uh, yes, yes. Organizing, partnering, and participating in conference, and, and, and. Preserving and protecting the same. You have sisters and brothers listening to me, or seeing to me, or seeing me. Civil society sector and its organization are one of the greatest protector of community, nation, people, and state. Never, ever ignore them. Never, ever let the military and the security to talk over. 
the military and security have been trained to do different jobs, have nothing to do with the civility of the country, have nothing to do with the modernity of the nation or the state, nothing. Don't let them ever and forever take the lead. They are the protectors, after Allah, of your society, your community, internally, by the security, and externally by the military. Preserving and protecting the civil side sector and this organization will not be achieved just by delivering talks, as I mentioned before. No. But instead, you know how can we preserve this protection of civil society? And this is a personal responsibility on each one of us. On each one of us, what? Our moral, moral performance, developmental role modeling, again, our constructive journey in life, for life, our behavioral generosity, our selfless existence, The battery, I forgot about the battery. Sorry. I, I was carried out. Oh, sorry. I was carried out by, uh, and I forgot to put the plug for the battery. Say it again. Moral performance, developmental role modeling. You should be a role model. Development other role models. You should contract the journey of life for the other people, not only for your life. Your behavior should be generosity. Selfless existence. You are there not for yourself, but for others. Successional provision and abundant inheritance for the effective, motivated, motivating, empowered, empowering young people. You have to do this. You have to empower the empowering young people to motivate the motivated young people, to build the young building young people, to develop the developing young people. You have to do this while you are in office, male and female. It's not processes and policies, the role. It's not just the process and policies. You cannot make a change. The, the Quran is with us for the last 1,400 years and more. The Torah is with us for thousands of years. The Bible is with us. Old Testament and New Testament is with us. The Bible needs somebody to make it is teaching effective in the community. Make this believer to be able, to be able, to be able to translate through the depth of their belief in the holy book into community action to change the values of the sentence in the bible in the torah in the quran into practical effective community action so policies procedures laws are not enough it's not processes and policies but it is creating the atmosphere that will improve the management skills, efficiency, direction, knowledge sharing, coaching and mentoring, vision and strategy. It's your role where you understand your value for life, the value of your religion, the value of the organization. So I answer today three questions. I'll say this again before I go. And if somebody would like to, uh, from the to send the message to Sister ha uh, uh, Aya on the Facebook. Uh, first question was: How can our growth inside an environmental tyranny or a, a, an environment of tyranny will make us a change maker? The second question was. Uh, how can't we be a loyal to one geographical area? 
we I talked about the theoretical part of it and the practical part of it. The last question, we keep uh, uh, establishing humanitarian and social organization, but quite often we forgot later on uh, about its principles and they become subjective and they become personal and become our 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 life achievement and we forget about all this. So my last comment to you, young men and young women today, is mourning, complaining is not good enough. Many young people managed to make that change. The people who created the social media platforms, I made a, a, a talk about it. The average age was 26, 27, which was Facebook, uh, TikTok, Instagram, uh, what else for social media? Instagram and uh, uh, Twitter and others. And we are sitting, doing nothing and just complaining. Stop complaining and go and make a time, or make a video for yourself during the day. See how many hours you use in the day to do something of benefiting to your own community. Even if it's very small, even if I go to visit a, 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 a church, a, a church or a mosque or a temple to help people, or even if I go to a hospital to help the nurses and to help the cleaners or to visit the sick, even if I spend the weekend, a few hours during the weekend and the evening teaching children, we don't do that, but we complain about this leader, this leader, this leader. I said, oh, the whole world is against us. But you know who is defeating us? It's us. It's us defeating ourselves because we do nothing. We become armchair warriors. Young people, you are the dream of the Ummah and of the universe. Don't become a nightmare. You are a dream. Don't become a nightmare. We have, we have, we do, you don't want nightmare anymore, and you cannot afford to have nightmare anymore. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Jazakum Allah khair for uh, being with us for this hour. And uh, I'll ask Sister Aya, if there's any questions, Sister Aya, uh, on the Instagram or actually on the Facebook, or in the Zoom, if there's no questions, if you ask any questions, or if you comment on the Aya, Aya, Aya is my uh, my manager. No, no. If no, I thank you very much for being patient. Jazakallah Abdul Rahim Al Maghribi Al Mgarbil Mgarbil Jazakumullah Khair or everybody on the Instagram. I've not been using the Instagram uh, for a long time. So Jazakumullah Khair, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa All the best, inshallah. And I hope if you can you can send me a message on the on the Facebook, or you can send me a message on the Instagram, or you can send me a message on the Zoom. And if you want my email, if you want my uh, uh, telephone number, WhatsApp, so I can forward it to you. You can send me from the messengers as well. I can communicate with you. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.